Okay, we've already looked at numbers 25 through 31, where we found uh, the weights of Hamilton circuits. They gave us a whole bunch of different circuits through a weighted graph. And we found out what the weights were. Uh, we used the brute fourth brute fourth <laughs> brute force method to determine um, which was the optimal solution. And now question number 33 is asking us to use the nearest neighbor method starting at vertex B to find the weight of, you know, find a solution to the, uh, the weight of a Hamilton circuit. So the nearest neighbor method, what that says is pick a starting vertex. So in this case, we start at B. So I'm going to start here at B. That also means I need to end at B. And nearest neighbor says pick the cheapest edge that you possibly can every step of the way. So if it is a valid step for you to take, and it is a cheap valid step for you to take, actually the cheapest valid step, that's the one that you have to take. So starting at B, my choice is I could go to A, but that would cost me 40. I could go to D, that would cost me 12. Or I could go to C, that would cost me 24. So the cheapest, the cheapest way to go is going to be going from B to D for a cost of 12. The other two are more expensive. So my, pa or my circuit is going to be B to D, okay? So the next step that I need to take is the cheapest valid step, okay? I could go D to A, that's 14. Um, I could go D to C, that's 10. D is connected to B, but I can't go there because I've already been there. So that wouldn't be a Hamilton circuit anymore if I went right back to B. So even though 12 is an, a less expensive option than 14, it's still not a valid choice because I've already been to vertex B. I can't go back there until the end. So the cheapest valid choice here is D to C. And that's for a cost of 10. Alright, um, now I need to take whatever valid choices I have left to make a circuit. I can't go from C to B because it won't be a Hamilton circuit anymore. I will have missed A entirely. So I kind of really don't have a whole lot of choices here. I have to go to A. That's the only choice that I have. If I went to B, it wouldn't be a Hamilton circuit anymore. So B to D, D to C, C to A. And then the only choice I have left here again is to go from A to B. I can't go back to D, I've already been there. I can't go back to C, I've already been there. I have to go back to B to complete my circuit. So that's A to B. So that is the actual circuit from the nearest neighbor method, but they also want us to give the value of that. So that's going to be B to D is 12, plus D to C is 10, plus C to A is 20, plus A to B is 40. And when we add that up in our calculators, we've done it before, but we'll go ahead and do it again. 12 plus 10 plus 20 plus 40, and that gives us 82. Yes, I just had to check to make sure that the answer was correct. So if we use the nearest neighbor method, starting at vertex B, then the, the value of the Hamilton circuit that we get is 82. Now we know that that wasn't the optimal solution. The optimal solution was 70. But 82 is not, you know, it's not a bad guess. If you don't have to do the brute force method, and sometimes it's impossible to do the brute force method, using the nearest neighbor does get us an ex an, uh, a good guess at what an inexpensive path through that that graph is. So the inexpensive Hamilton circuit by using the nearest neighbor method turns out to be B, D, C, A, B with a cost of 82.